for re-election in this election. But he is very upset about some alliances that the minor parties are going to make. And in fact, it could throw up a minor party that we arguably have never heard of getting into the Senate. He mentioned a chap by the name of Glenn Dury, who's been around Canberra for a while, been around State Parliament in New South Wales for a while, and uh, pretty much what Glenn's done is told the minor parties, in a way, how to make these alliances and how to use the preferential system we have to actually win a damn seat, rather than just throw your preferences, Liberal, Labor, National, Greens, and actually win the thing. And Glenn rang up not long after uh, Ron Boswell was on and said, uh, gee, I'd love to have a chat with you and tell you what I actually do do, as opposed to what Ron Boswell says I am doing. So Glenn Jury will join us next on The Daily Agenda. <laughs> My name is Laurie Atlas. Yesterday I spoke to Senator Ron Boswell and uh, he was principally talking about the preference system and how uh, this time it, it could, in Queensland, actually throw up a minor party to get into the Senate. In fact, I will be talking later on this afternoon to Daniel McCarthy from the Australian Fishing and Lifestyle Party and they're the ones, while Ron didn't mention them by name, Senator Boswell, uh, that was the party he was referring to. But he also mentioned a chap... Um, by the name of uh, Jury, 
And uh, Glenn Jury is the man who Senator Ron Boswell said has been going around Australia and basically teaching the minor parties to form alliances and get into the Senate, for better or for worse. And uh, Glenn's ears were burning yesterday afternoon, weren't they, Glenn? They certainly were, and thanks for calling. <laughs> That's all right. Thanks for calling me up and uh, and uh, putting your point of view. Now, Senator Boswell is uh, clearly upset about this, and, well, he would be, I guess. Well, I would ask the good Senator, what does democracy mean? Really, what does it mean? And, and Well, let me put it another way that many people could probably relate to. Um, the Coles, uh, Woolies, Duopoly around Australia and all of the, uh, rightly so, fuss about that and forcing small businesses out of little towns. You know, the, the, the good senator is advocating the political version of that. Do we just have the two major parties? Is mm. that what he wants? Or does, does he want people who feel strongly about an issue, like the, the party you've just mentioned, the the Fishing and Lifestyle Party, who, who and forgive me, I don't know exactly what they're about, but obviously they feel strongly about fishing issues. Should these people not be able to express themselves through the political process? And It has thrown up some strange ones, hasn't it? I, I, I assume you'd be aware, and I'll get to a very strange one that you pointed out to me off air in a minute, but as I said to Senator Boswell, it, it seems a bit of a shame, whether I agree with uh, Senator Sarah Hanson-Young from the Greens or not, it, it, it seems um, a bit of a shame that uh, she is being uh, she is being uh, turfed probably by a party that's got about one point five percent of the vote. It, it, it appears. Um, you know, I don't know that that party is responsible. Uh, and apart from uh, Nick Xenophon uh, changing his preferences around, is, is I, look, I, I, I think it's a bad time of the cycle for Senator Hanson Young. Uh, Xenophon is up. Uh, he's a far more popular figure in South Australia than that of um, Sarah Hanson Young. Uh, forgive me if you're listening, good Senator Hanson Young, but that is the case. Mm. Um, she she didn't poll well at the last election, and she went to preferences to get up. She's likely to poll perhaps, mm, geez, <laughs> 30 40 percent less this time. So is it that much? Is it? Yeah. Oh yeah, she's in a bad way. Um, uh, I don't believe she's got much chance of getting up at all, um, and. Uh, it's not fair to suggest that a minor party uh, is the reason for that. Now, but a minor party yeah. may take a seat, certainly. Mm. They're very upset, aren't they, the Nationals, with Bob Catter? They're very upset that Bob Catter is preferencing the Labor Party. They feel it's a... No, no, and Senator Boswell said to me on air, basically, that he he is polite to Bob, but they really aren't friends anymore and haven't been since he walked out on the party. But they're very upset that he's preferencing the Labor Party. But also his constituents are very upset that he's preferencing the Labor Party. Well, look, that's a matter for, for Catter. And for but there are all, uh, what I'm saying is there are all sorts of deals, aren't there, Glenn, that are done? There and, are. and there are very strange bedfellows. I mean, the Greens are, uh, for want of a better expression, in bed with Clive Palmer, for heaven's sake, and they hate mining. Well, it's not just the Greens and Palmer. It's One Nation. And the Greens. See, now, how does that happen? That 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 just smacks of that, ridicularity to me. One nation. That that is a question for one nation and a question for the Greens. Now, this is not the first time it's happened. The Greens actually elected uh, um, uh, Senator Nettle. For, uh, sorry, did I say the Greens? One Nation elected uh, a Green senator in two thousand and one with their preferences, hmm. and they could do it again at this election. The, the, the Greens are being preferenced by One Nation. Uh, and that will come as a shock to many people listening to this who perhaps mm. thought that they might vote for One Nation, but that is the case. That is the case. Is that not an umbrance against... Oh, it's not an umbrance against our democracy, but it's... How did Senator Boswell put it? Like-minded like minor parties getting together for the greater good. Now, I'm sure it's fine for Senator Ron Boswell to say that, because that well, means that... that but if, if is it true, Glenn? that if the minor parties are to be elected, do they have to get into bed with some strange people to do it? Well, look, not necessarily. Um, this, uh, I headed up a group that we would become known in the media as the Minor Parties Alliance, and mm. in that group we have about 32 minor parties represented. Some of these groups have preference purely on philosophical uh, or, or, or policy basis, if you like. Others have been very, very pragmatic and done what... what the senator would prefer to as perhaps deals with the devil. Uh, and others are a bit of a mix. Um, and surely in a democracy, 
this is all a good thing. We, we have a freedom of choice at the end of the day. I mean, what does the good senator want? Really, is he suggesting we, we go to some sort of totalitarian regime where we have to do everything that he thinks is right? I mean, I don't necessarily agree with many of these minor parties, but what I do agree with is their right to exist and yeah. our right to freedom of expression. This is Australia, for goodness sake. Not not the Soviet Union, not, not the, the communist China or North Korea. This is Australia. And what's the good senator talking about, really? Well, he's, I, I think probably he's talking about the survival of his party in the Senate. Well, I think you're on the ball there. Um, uh, look, they, they'll pull their... They'll, they'll get their three uh, senators in Queensland unless they keep screwing up the way that they seem to be in recent days. Um, but from my perspective, I think a diversity of views in the parliament is a good thing. So if you if you are if you are doing what Senator Boswell is doing, and I'm not here to judge, but if you are going around in your capacity, Glenn, as the part of the minor parties alliance and allowing uh, giving them a strategy to actually get into the Senate rather than just distribute preferences around, uh, what do you think this election will throw up, if any, as far as independent senators are concerned? What are you expecting? Gee, it, look, it's it's a it's a bit of a mess. There's so many groups running and so many of these groups are new. Uh, some of them have done, as you've suggested, some unusual deals. Um, uh, but if four of them get up around the country and this, this, four of them get up at the expense of people from the left, that is either the Labor Party or the Greens, then they will have the balance of power. Mm. It's that simple. Mm. Um, now, that's a possibility. Um, it but unlikely. Depends. Well, no. It depends on the dynamic between the major parties. It depends if the doors open in each state. Uh, if we talk about Queensland as an example, yeah. um, it is likely that the LNP will pull three uh, senators. They will get three senators out of this. Yeah. It is unlikely that their fourth will get up, and Labor will probably pick up two. The Greens will more than likely miss out on that last spot, unless one nation elects them with their preferences. This is all possible. Mm -hmm. But I think that the last position will be open to a minor party, and it most likely uh, will probably be the Australian Fishing and Lifestyle Party. Cata has got a chance if his primary vote is around 5%. Palmer, less so, um, because he, he has not uh, chose not to be in the minor parties alliance, therefore he is not getting a good preference flow. Palmer will have to be well over 8% in the Senate to have any chance of getting elected, and I don't think that's a reality, quite frankly. Any chance in the House of Reps for Clive Palmer? Just out of interest. Oh. <laughs> Uh, look, I think he will, he may, mm. should I say, he may have influence over who gets up and who does not in a number of marginal seats. But uh, the strategy that's been employed by that group this time around, um, I don't think is a winning strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, All right, well, it's interesting. You know, it's politics, in sorry, carry on. I'm, I'm sorry. Po po politics is a long apprenticeship. You can't just come into it uh, uh, at the last minute and expect to win seats. Um mm. If Mr. Palmer wishes to win a seat, then I would strongly suggest to him he start with the Senate and and develop a refined and smart strategy uh, combined with his resources. Um, yeah, next time around he could have a big influence. I mean, talk right, about balance of power. If there's a double dissolution and Palmer's still around and he does it smart, well, <laughs> mm. who knows? What do you think, Glenn? Glenn Dury is with us and... Um he was mentioned yesterday in an interview I did with uh, Senator Ron Boswell, um, part of the Minor Party Alliance. What do you think is the long-term future of the Greens with all these other minor parties around now doing deals? Um, I, I think let's look at how the Greens got there. Apart from Tasmania and a couple of other uh, isolated instances, they've never pulled a quota in their own right. That is, they've never pulled that 14.29% to win a seat without preferential support. Mm. So why now do we have the Greens with the balance of power with nine members in the Senate? That's because the Labor Party have supported them election after election after election. Now, there are those in the Labor Party that are waking up and saying, hey, this Labor-Green alliance, uh, it's not working. Every time the Greens win a seat, every time the Greens kick a goal, it's at the expense of uh, someone from the Labor Party. You cannot have uh, someone from the left in the Greens uh, win a seat and then expect someone else from the left in the Labor Party to also win a seat. So mm. the Labor Party machine is waking up to this. And 
your question and what is the future of the Greens, I would say, ask the Labor Party, how much longer will they continue to preference the Greens? Because when they stop, when the Labor Party gets out of bed with the Greens, the Greens will be limited to, in the longer term, perhaps just two senators, and they will come out of Tasmania, possibly three. Mm. We might see one get up in Victoria, one of the other states. But um, the, the, the wedge has been put in the, in the crack, if you like, in that the Labor Party at this election have preferenced Catter in Queensland. And then, interestingly enough, the party that you've, you've mentioned, the Australian Fishing and Lifestyle Party. So if either of those two groups get up on Labor Party preferences. There may be a precedent there, mm-hmm. um, and the Labor Party might climb out of this this long term operation that they've had with the Australian Greens. And Anthony, then the Greens are in big trouble. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm I don't care particularly, but I'm a bit worried for them long term, to be honest. Uh, well, you know what? Let me let me just say something on that point. Mm. I personally don't agree with the Greens' policies. Mostly, I don't agree, mm. and I would say this in regards to what the good Senator Boswell is suggesting in, with what I'm doing in educating the minor parties. While I don't support the Greens, I absolutely support their right to exist. Absolutely. absolutely. Do you... Uh, Anthony Green, who's probably the one of the great uh, analysers of elections, he thinks this preferential system, this version that we have in Australia, is patently ridiculous. Do you agree with that or not? Well, in simple terms, no, I don't. And let me say... Anthony, a friend of mine, he, he rides a bike and so do I, and we mm. actually run into each other from time to time. But on this issue, we do not agree. <laughs> right, I thought that. All right, mate, great talking to you. All right, and thank you for your interest. My, my, my pleasure, and uh, hopefully, um, w- well, we'll see what happens next week. <laughs> well, look, look, I think the lower house is a certainty. Yep. I think that's a certainty. But the real and interesting story is going to be the uh, what happens in the Senate. Will we know on the night? Uh, maybe. Maybe. It just depends how many primary votes are uh, put up on the AC's website. Uh, happy to talk to you at, um, at 10 o'clock at night, if you like, and give you uh, what I think is going to happen. But, um, well, look, Glenn, uh, hang on, because uh, I'll, I'll get your number off the air, OK? Don't go away. Uh, no, Glenn Jury from the, uh, basically the Minor Parties Alliance. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. This is The Daily Agenda.